everybody, just about everybody on the site had their own room, and it was a little eight by ten room. And in your bed, you had a. I had a telephone in the room because one of my extra duties up there was to be the uh, postal clerk for the site. Uh, just before I went into the service, when I when I was in high school, I worked for the post office in the Green, so. They found that out, and they said, "Oh, you're the new post post office clerk," <laughs> and that was okay. Mm -hmm. it, it took a lot of a lot of time. And if in the picture you'll see, I had a telephone in my room, and that was only because about 500 miles out, they'd know that a mail plane was coming in, and they'd call me and say, "You need to go down and get the mail." They said, "The plane's not even landed yet. <laughs> By the time you get down there, it'll be here." <laughs> <laughs> so you did that by yourself. I, so I, yeah, I had a I had a truck at my disposal. And I drove down the mountain, and it usually took about an hour to get to the to get to the main base from where we were on the mountain because all the roads were well, S curves going down the mountain, very icy, very slippery. So you had to drive real slow. And I go down and get the mail, bring it back up, and I got there, and everybody was waiting for the mail. You know, and I, it was okay. And then if you turn that over, and uh, you can see the picture of the BMU site on top up there, I believe it is. You can see the antennas in the distance. Okay. And if you turn it over again, on, top of the, on the top picture you'll see our site that was on top of the mountain. Those were, both of those are ra radar domes, and one was the up and down, and the other one was the horizontal radar. Okay. And so you were support. Did you work on the radar or what? No, I worked on the radios, the air to ground radios. Okay. Did they go out often? Uh, it depended. Uh, they were all tubes. At that time, and tubes were very unreliable. At that time, I mean, they, they were somewhat reliable, but uh, you know, after constant use all day long, 24/7, they do go out. So we had a lot of radios that were surplus, not surplus radios, but backup radios, and we just change them out. And then the day shift would always work on the radios. Night shift was just to make sure everything was working and change them out if we had to. And how did everybody get along up there? Oh, great, great. We we worked uh, seven days a week, eight hours a day. Uh, most of our time at night was playing pinochle on, on the night shifts because nothing was really going on that much. Mm -hmm. When something was going on, we they called us on radio and told us that we had a problem with a certain radio frequency and go change it out. And we, that was that was it. And did they have, um, were there people up there to defend the base and where you were at? <clears throat> were there people? Yes. There were Nike sites. Uh, in one of the pictures you'll see the mountains all around the base and on those, on those mountains were Nike sites up there. Plus there was a B-52 constantly up there. Plus we had uh, squadron of F-106 fighter jets up there, too, okay. that were constantly uh, on guard. Did you have to uh, drill in preparation while you were up there? All, all, all the all time, the yeah. Okay. Emergency drills, yeah. Okay. And um, so when you were off-duty, you played pinochle, or what else did you do? They had a two-lane bowling alley at our site. They had an airman's club, an NCO club, and an officer's club. Okay. And when the East, when the airman's club ran out, we went to the officer's club, to the NCO club, and when they ran out, we went to the officer's club. And the same with everyone else, you know. Okay. Whoever ran out first, they went to somebody else's club. And, okay. and there was times when we were we were snowed in that we couldn't get any supplies up there. So. How much snow did you get? If you look at the size of some of the buildings that were there, uh, the snow, snow blew in and covered the buildings. Oh, I mean, over 10 feet. No. Uh, no, 
dump. Yeah. The, one, the one with the radomes, with the radars. Yeah, you can see this. You can see the height of the buildings. They were 10 or 12 foot tall, and the snow would come in and just blanket the whole site, and we'd be snowed in for three, four, five days, sometimes a week. How did you get supplies? Uh, for three, four, five days a week, we didn't get any supplies. We depended on, on Thule for our water and everything else. They, they used to bring a, a tanker up and put water in our tanks up there. So sometimes it got a little ripe when <laughs> we got snowed in. Okay. And, uh, but even when you got snowed in, you were still working oh, all yeah, the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And um, did people visit back and forth from where you were down to the... Basin Not very much. No. Uh, some of the officers would come up on inspection, but uh, not very often. Okay. What about the uh, people who lived up there? Uh, there was nobody that lived on the mountain, but there was Eskimos in the area. And uh, one, one particular Eskimo used to come up and do his hunting up there, and he hunted Arctic fox. And uh, Find a picture up there. He used to come in on his dog sled, uh, and he had about eight dogs, eight huskies, that pulled his sled, and he hunted fox. And I think there's like six or seven fox that he hunted that one day. And they would trade those, trade the skins in for uh, ammunition for his rifle and food and whatever else he needed. At that time, Denmark owned uh, owned Greenland, but now at, at this point, I think uh, Greenland is independent now. Okay, and he was the only other non-military person you saw. That's the only one up there that we saw by our mountain. Yeah, okay. their their village was off limits to us. So, mm -hmm. and were you able to converse with him? Uh, they basically knew one word, and that was cigarette. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and they didn't, you didn't want to get too close because they didn't smell very good. Bats for them were not a priority. Okay. Um, and so you said that there are foxes and... There's, there's Arctic fox, there's Arctic hares. Arctic hare is a triple-sized rabbit, you might say, that was probably two foot long, two and a half foot long, and you could probably jump 15, 20 feet in one Leap, you know. Okay. Any other animals? Uh, Arctic hares, Arctic fox. Uh, no, that that was it. And outside that, well, yeah, polar bears. But uh, you didn't see too many of them. But when you see one about ten feet away from you, you don't want to see any other that close again. Did you have an encounter with one? I when I was got up one morning and I opened the door to get a little fresh air and look out to see what was going on and he was at our garbage dump and he stood up and he was about 12 foot tall and it didn't take me very long to get the door closed and run to the other end of the site. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, did they hunt them? I don't know if they did or not. Okay. What was the uh, food like up there? The food? Mm -hmm. Food was excellent. There wasn't a after I left basic training and school, Thule and my next base, the food was excellent. Uh, we, we had steak, we had eggs, uh, a lot of sites had powdered eggs and powdered milk. We did not because at our site was the bakery and we made all the bread and we made all the sweet rolls up at our site, the one the bakers did. And uh, the army used to come over and trade for for sweet rolls and cinnamon rolls and donuts and that, and they had steaks and real milk, and, you know. So we ate good up at our site. Okay. So you did interact with other aspects of the military people from yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just on that on that basis, you know. Okay. So. All right. Um, and were there any incidents that happened? Uh, at Thule Air Base, yes, there was an incident when I was up there. It was uh, sometime during uh, 1961 
one of the B-52s that was flying over there. Uh, I, I don't know if you know or not, but all the B-52s at that time were fully loaded for war. They were atomic weapons on, on the plane. Uh, and the reason they were up there was they could get to Russia or any other place within a small amount of time from up there. Okay. So they were up there in the area 24-7. Uh, one of the escape hatches blew out and sucked the pilot out of the plane, and they had to land the plane on the, on the ice. And that was kind of a harrowing experience because the co-pilot had to bring it in on the ice, which he did, and everything was fine. <coughs> Excuse me. And they had to tow it up from the ice onto the onto the runway because it couldn't land on the runways. There was not enough room for that to, that plane to land there. And uh, during the next three days, there was never so many generals and congressmen up there wanting to know what was going on and what happened, and they never did find a pilot. Yeah. Anything else ever happened? Uh, not up there, no. That was, that was it. Okay. I spent a year up there, 300, and it's one day less than, uh, 10 days less than a full year. Okay. There were, the, when you're when your uh, person that's going to relieve you comes in, you get to go home. So my guy came in ten days early. And I, it's a long see. I'm out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and and how did you? Uh, how did people deal with the? I mean, you're so isolated. How did they deal with that? Uh, a lot of a lot of people didn't deal with it very well. There was uh, a couple of people at our site that. Uh, had some problems mm -hmm. and uh, psyche problems, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, some of them turned into drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot to do at our site except that we had a bowling alley, like I said before. Mm -hmm. And when we were able to get new movie, we got movies okay. when we weren't snowed in. Okay. Uh, some were in danger, but you went anyway just to watch the movie, have something to do. You that's why I said we played a lot of pinochle up there. Okay, and did uh, you have contact with your families uh, other than Mel, or were yes. you allowed to read? Yes, yes. There was a there was a cell, oh, and I forgot a couple things. Yeah, there was a uh, a phone you could call home, but you only had a five minute phone call, and it was reverse charges, you know, and I called. I made a call home and my dad answered the phone and the operator says, we have a long distance collect call from Thule Air Base Green. And my dad said, what? <laughs> I said, dad, it's only five bucks. You know? <laughs> did, he, did he accept the charge? Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, and I did that a couple of times. And uh, we had our AM radio station up there, too, which I, I learned because that was another one of my assignments to take care of the AM radio station, the radio in it. So I got to know the operator very well, and we used to make ham radio calls from Thule Air Base to Chicago, and they would patch us in, and I would talk to on the ham radio for them, with them for a while. So that, that worked out very good. Okay. Uh, one of the other things, we, when I was up there, Bob Hope came up there, and it was his last tour for the uh, USO to go up north. From then on, he went to Vietnam. But we didn't get to see him because we were snowed in that day. But uh, Anita Bryant sang Paper Roses to us, and we broadcast it all over the site. So, and that was kind of cool. Yeah, that's something. But we missed, we missed seeing Bob Hope. That's stupid. Yeah. And then my, my relief came in, and I went bye-bye. OK. And now getting up there and coming home, you were flown? By military plane, yeah. Okay. And when you left there? When I went up there, I went on a, on a DC-8 four-engine plane, and it took us like 14 hours because we, had to, we left from McGuire Air Force Base, New Jersey, to Corner Brook, Newfoundland, and then to Thule Air Base. Coming back, it was a jet, a Boeing 707, and it took us six hours. We flew right into... McGuire Air Force Base, New Jersey. Okay. 
and where did you go from there? I got transferred to uh, Andrews Air Force Base, which is in Washington, D.C., but I wasn't stationed at Andrews Air Force Base either. I was stationed at Davidsonville, Maryland, which is a transmitter, radio transmitter site, and we broadcast uh, radio signals from, from our site to several locations across the world. Uh, Corner Brook, Newfoundland, Lodges Air Force Base, uh, Azores, Libya, Tripoli, Libya, and a couple other sites, I forget what, what they were. And it was uh, a lot of fact stuff, a lot of weather stuff, plus we had, uh, we had responsibility for radio transmission for Air Force One. Okay. Uh, we would get a call from Andrews Air Force Base that the president is going up and he's going in, and they wouldn't tell us where, but he's going in a, a southwest direction or a northeast direction, and then we would have to connect the appropriate antenna to the radio for where for the direction he was going. Okay. And what was involved in connecting the antenna? Uh, just a matter of turning off the radio, unconnecting the antenna that was on there and connecting the correct one on oh, there. Okay. Uh, we, we were on a uh, I think it was like a 500 acre tract of land uh, outside of Davidsonville, Maryland, which was about eight miles from Annapolis. And we had uh, probably 200 different antennas out in the, out in the farm, in the antenna farm we called it. And they were used for all different kinds of things. For weather, for, trans for radio transmission, for weather transmission, for facsimile transmission, all, you know, all kinds of stuff. We used to broadcast weather from D.C. to all, all points of the world. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Do you want to take a moment? No, I'm fine. Um, and how many people were at this space? Uh, there was probably 60 of us, 50 or 60 of us at that site. Okay. So. Right. And were you allowed to go off? Oh, yeah. Base there, and yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we, we were to um, Annapolis quite a few times. We used to use the medical facilities at the Naval Academy because it was so much closer than going all the way to Andrews. Andrews was 25 miles, and the Naval Academy was only 8 miles. Okay. Plus, we went to the Naval Academy mm -hmm. uh, football games, you know, so that was okay, too. <laughs> okay. And what was it like uh, where you were as far as food and accommodation? Again, the, the, and I must say the food was great there, too, because... The sergeant we had that was in charge of the mess hall at Thule, Sergeant Johnny Mass, his brother was in charge of the mess hall at Davidsonville, Maryland, <laughs> Sergeant Charles Mass, and he was just as good as cook as his brother was. And the food was just outstanding, and he did a lot of training too. So, yeah. what a coincidence! Yeah, it was. It was very coincidental. So you had more. Uh, Opportunities when you had free time. Oh yeah, we we were in DC in DC at most every weekend. Every time we had time off, we'd go to DC to the Smithsonian, and I don't think uh, we covered every bit of it. And I was there for two years. Okay. I mean, it's just not possible to do everything in a weekend or a couple of weekends. I mean, like I say, two years and we still didn't cover everything. Sure. I mean, went to the main things, Constitution Hall and. So the Constitution, and we went to the Air Museum. At that time, it was located in the Smithsonian in D.C. Now it's out, it's in Virginia someplace, I think. Okay. Then we went to the Treasury, and we went to the FBI, and we went to the White House. And, you know, there's just so much over there. Mm -hmm. Baltimore has just as much, and there's all kinds of war, war areas from Civil War areas in the area that you visit too. Plus Arlington National Cemetery. It's, it's all kinds of history there. Um, and so you said you were there for two years? Yes. Anything interesting happen? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, I, was, I was at Andrews Air Force Base and we set up a radio, a radio antenna for the President for Air Force One to in the southwest direction, which we found out he went to Dallas. Everybody knows when he was in Dallas, he got assassinated. 